man, that is steep. Oh. We're in a little spot called the Wadigans, about two hours north of Sydney. Popular four-wheel drive area for good reason. These are some of the toughest tracks you'll find anywhere in Australia. We've actually been out here for a few days right now and we've had every single ingredient thrown at us. Bogs, steep hills, super big ruts, and an absolute blast. And right now, we're actually trying to get out of the Wadigans. And we're still on the end of a winch rope. So folks, do me a favour. Grab yourself something cold to drink, sit in your favourite chair, relax and watch four-wheel drive action. Phew. Right on, mate. If you're into tough four-wheel driving and epic campsites, then this is the video for you. And I've also got cracking news too. Get 10% off store-wide at Four Wheel Drive Supercenter. That's 10% off winches, spotlights, and heaps more gear. Just keep an eye out for the exclusive discount code in this video. And of course, enjoy the adventure. Here we go, mate, on the dirt in the Wadigans. How good is it? Wadigans, mate. Been up here about four or five times, I reckon, over the last decade or so. And every single time, I have what I would like to call Something of an adventure. Yeah, mate, you don't um, come in here for a short time, that's for sure. There's so many hard tracks in here. It's a bit of a maze, mate. I, you're lucky we've got GPSs because it's one of those places where you take a left-hand turn and that becomes a right, then the right becomes a left. Left goes up and down, and before you know it, you're lost. <laughs> You'll be down the end of a hard track on the end of a winch cable, no doubt. Where do you think we head to first, mate? Any ideas? Mate, um, you were talking about Cut Rock Road now, which fun you had years and years ago. I haven't done it for ages, so I reckon we, we go down there and have a look. 100% agree, mate. In fact, if you don't hurry up, I'm gonna overtake you. And with that, our course was set. But first... Oh, wishing well, mate. Old wishing well, mate. This is a very famous one at that. Yeah, I've seen it a few times. I never stopped and had a look inside it. Whoa! Yeah, don't fall in. Look at that. What's it all about? Well, actually, they started off putting this uh, wishing well in here, basically for the four-wheel drive gods. So you put a coin in there, ah, yeah. and you'll um, have a great trip and won't yeah. damage as much. And um, I've been doing it for years, mate. Absolutely. No, this, I've never actually done it, and I've broken a lot up here. All right, well, I think we should do it. You know when you throw a coin into a wishing well, you should do it over your shoulder. That's All the, right. That's how I'm, not, I'm not really good at it. Oh. You're out. It's in the puddle. <laughs> Woohoo! All, All right. right, I'm not going to share my wish with you, but <laughs> I'm good to go. Let's do this. We've given ourselves three days to explore this region, so we're going to start by heading out to Cut Rock Road. We'll be camping at Blacksmith's Beach and then plan to take on the infamous Killingsworth Loop. And finally, we'll be heading out to the CPT 80 track. Let's get cracking. First stop, Cut Rock. This must be it, mate. And um, there's a lot of those belts bucking around, mate, straight into the hard stuff. Yeah, from memory, mate, she gets pretty tricky right straight off the road. Oh, there's a gap here about the width of an 80 series between two trees. And I say about because I'm not sure about that yet. Is it that gap, is that just me or is that gap getting narrower as you get closer? A bit of bark off both trees, that suggests, um, yeah. Oh, you're going to hit your tyre on it. Oh. Can we hit my what? Do you want me to jump up there, mate? You've got no room. Yeah, it looks, it looks pretty tight. I might um, get you to, mate. I think I've got to steer into the tree and then, um, then, then turn right a bit. All right, mate, I'm going to try and bring you over to the left-hand side here a little bit because I think if you roll too much to this side, you are going to hit that tree. So we'll just see how we go, eh? Graham to spot me through this one. If you're unsure, there's absolutely no shame in getting a mate out to spot for you. It's way better than panel damage, or even worse. <laughs> dude, have a look at that. There's not much room there, dude. There, there's a millimetre. Are you going to touch that? You reckon I need to put something in here? I don't know if I've been so close to any object without hitting it before. There's a layer of paint between myself and the tree. This is seriously tight, but there's no other option but to go through this very narrow gap. It's working a bit. Try, try going left, see what happens. Can you push the car? That, that, that's, that's actually working. Go, Graham's go. surprisingly strong for a small bloke. Oh, like that! Oh, which way's the bank? Oh my goodness, it was resting on that flare ever so slightly. Hey, the basics of, uh, I reckon, any four-wheel drive trip is to take someone stronger than the vehicle. And not, not often do I rise to the challenge. <laughs> But it's all you need, just a little oomph to the side. Just to be able to push the vehicle slightly on yeah. the suspension to get it to go over. It works. You've just got the ever so slightly stained bark mark on your flare. Character. It is! Character. I'll get out of the way. Look at that. <laughs> oh! Right. Yeah, well, that's all gonna right. be a big one. I'll bring her up. Alright. Okay, Graham's turning the D-Max. 
Look how narrow this track is. It really is wedge between a rock and a hard place. It's just about pinpoint perfect, mate. It's all rocks and loose shale. But check out the D-Max's traction control. It's working an absolute treat here. Are you a bit too D-Max's in there, mate? Oh, 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 a bit of barking between that. That's a love tap, mate. He's made it with room to spare. Sometimes, <laughs> good things do come in small packages. Too easy. Right, we've arrived at Cut Rock. Mate, as you drive closer to this big rock step, it's um, it's it's huge. It's not just big, it's huge. Is it weird that the rock step's getting bigger and the 80's getting smaller? Yeah, something's happening, mate. I can't quite explain it, but um, whoa, yeah, she's she's a two-part rock step. Like, yeah, I'll be able to stop and make camp in the middle, and um, then and try for the summit in the morning, I reckon. Do we need supplemental oxygen? Are we going to be all right? I'm just going to try slowly on this and see what happens. Good lord. The good news is there is a fair bit of traction. But up ahead, it looks like the traction is going to be pretty hard to find. Oh yeah, you're stuck, but you're stuck in like a, um, a grotto. I have to come back. I think I slipped ever so slightly off the line I wanted. Yeah, you slipped, so your wheels are in two canyons. I'll come up and give you a bit of a spot, mate. Got a bit of a predicament here. What these things here are, what I've been told these things here are, is where they used to bring the wagon trains down when they were cutting wood up further. And of course, erosion's dug them out a bit and other tires have dug them out. And Sean's wheels are falling into these and he's not a wagon, unfortunately. I'm not a wagon. <laughs> I've got about one horse pulling me out the front, but. Yep. If we build this up with a bunch of rocks, humor me, let's just try and put a whole heap of rocks in there. Just here. Yeah. Okay, this is Road Building 101. Using what's around you to fill in holes and make bridges. Feeling better already. Feels good. We use this in nearly every terrain around Australia when the going gets really tough. You may have to pop it over onto those rocks at the bottom, mate. Yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give it a little bit. And there we go. It's worked an absolute treat. Yeah. Good work. That's the go. Right. those rocks at the bottom. Yeah, you just popped up onto that and you just straight up. And because I could give it a bit more go because yeah. I wasn't trying to go an aggressive rock yeah. step. Yeah. Very nice, mate. Now for Graham. His biggest challenge in the D-Max is the fact that it doesn't have the same clearance as the 80. Now what Graham does have in his side, however, is the size of the D-Max and the low centre of gravity. This all works to his advantage and actually helps him get through. But in this case, it's not going to be enough. See, that's where I don't want to give it the same you can. Yeah. Just, just have, it up slowly. Just have a know. scratch at that. I'm going to do that front end, bro. Well, we've sort of opened up our Wadigans campaign with what I'd consider to be one of my favourite tracks in the Wadigans, but also probably right up there, an A-grade track, really quite committing. We haven't gone in softly. We've really gone in and committed hard. It would gut me to do damage on day one without having had a really good crack over the next two or three days. Day four, day five, go nuts, because you're heading home anyway. But on day one, I don't want to break anything. I want to play a bit longer. So you pay your money, you buy your winch, now's the time to use it. You know, it's not going to take much here. Just a quick winch and it's going to pull him up over that huge rock step. Now we've decided to hook the winch up to the back of the 80 because in situations like this, we really want a straight line pull. Now the 80 is a nice heavy vehicle and it's going to work as the perfect anchor point. Up ahead and things have tightened up again, but this time it's a rock instead of trees. And again, I've got Graham out the front spotting my line. Good. Now for the climb out of this rocky crevasse. My worst fear here is to get hung up on the tail shaft. You dint the tail shaft, and you can do big damage later on. Yep, 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 yep. Yep, yep. But as you can see, I'm getting hung up on a number of things, mainly my rear diff and control arm. I think you have to winch it, bro. Just can't do it. Woo! Puffin. Comes a point where you've got to break out the winch. This is that point right now. We've given it the everything. Panel damage is imminent. CV damage is imminent. We don't want to do any of the above. So we're going to winch up out, out of here and see how we go. Let's go out. When you are winching, just try and feel what's happening. If it feels like it's really tight and it's not coming out, like, you know, the winch go should ahead. be able to pull the vehicle out quite easily unless it's really hung up. So always check. Would you have a look at that? There's literally millimetres in between that rock wall and my panel. It's a good thing for bar work, eh? Did 
Now, it was a heavy going little winch, but it got me out, no worries at all. There we go, that made it so much easier. I felt the vehicle just pick up. That's exactly what I wanted. Now, I'm gonna try and drive the rest on my own steam. With Graham out the front giving me a few pointers, I managed to find a good line and drive right to the top. How good's that? Go the 80. Woo. Mate, that is a proper drive. The second I started winching, it picked so the back up. Oh, mate. Yeah, I couldn't feel it, that's the problem. I could see the tree. First time I felt like my vehicle was literally getting stretched. Probably has been. All right, mate, you stay here and uh, guide me up this bad boy. Yeah, mate, all you. There's only sort of one way you can go. Now Graham's pointing the D-Max directly at the challenge. Let's see how he goes. You're on your body. I can feel it. And Graham's hard up against his body. He's like literally on the chassis rail here. And I'm just worried about the tail shaft and the diff, similar to what happened to me. And um, it's just a really deep ruts on this, on this track. The good news is he doesn't have the suspension articulation I've got, so he's not dropping the tyre in these holes. He's keeping them quite level, which hopefully will put le less pressure on that tail shaft. And I think we go from that tree over there, and it'll pull me across and up. There's a bit of rock scraping, but the rock sliders and bash plates are doing their job. That's what they're there for. With the winch unhooked, Graham's able to take on the last section with a strong drive to the top. Nice one, mate. As we punch further into the Wadigan State Forest, the track continues to throw us around. Just a rock garden through here. Steep rock steps, one after another. Just doesn't give up this place. So much fun, real technical driving. Oh, this is a tough little bit. Ah, jeez. That rock step didn't look like much from back here, mate. But uh, I'm gonna reserve my judgment. Oh, it's, a, it's a proper thing, mate, that's for sure. All right, start through here. You've really got to pick that line and get that throttle control just right. Once you said and done, though. Oh, that wasn't a good line. <laughs> Now Graham's seen my line and he's got to follow suit. The D-Max is a bit lower slung than me, but nevertheless it steps up and walks it. it makes it look easy in fact. Hey, what a Mate, drive. That is sick. It, Mate, just, just, it just did well. You just set this big up perfect, I yep. reckon, with the sliders and all that. I've had an idea. What's that? I don't know whether you're up for this because it's a little bit of a drive. Yeah, yeah. I'm always up for something. What do you reckon we camp on the beach tonight? Beach? Yeah, it's not too far. It's like within an hour from here. 45 minutes. You'd be, on, you'd be, you're cracking a beer in 45 minutes. Yeah, we've got heaps of daylight left. It's daylight well, savings. 45 an hour following you. <laughs> Get yeah, going. What do you reckon? Flackies? Flackies is good. All right, okay, let's go there. I'll follow you, mate. With that, we head towards the coast. We've joined onto the main forestry roads, which crisscross all through this region. The roads are in good condition, and it's not long before we've got the waves out the front and sand under our tyres. We've got to love coastal driving. Suddenly, we're both in trouble. Although we've already aired down, it's still no match for the extremely soft sand. Oh, that is so soft. I'll go back a bit. Nah, it's real soft, I'm just gonna keep trying to crawl. I'm moving. No, I'm not. Somehow, I managed to keep from sinking down and pull my way out of the soft section. Yeah, I'm gonna have to do an epic Max Tracks recovery out of here, mate. See what I mean? just made that. See a lot of sand flicking out of the back of the D-Max, so I think he's gone down, so we'll go check and see, make sure he's all right. This is where Max Tracks really come into their own. A little bit of digging and place them under the wheels. Simple. Let's give this a go. Yeah, she bobbed. Go, 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 go. How good's that? You know, Graham and I both thought, well, this is not going to work. We're in an uphill gradient, soft sand, super soft. We thought, you know, I might take four or five goes on the max tracks, but as you saw, as soon as that vehicle got up on the max tracks, it got all the momentum it needed and just went bang, straight up the hill in one go. These things are worth their weight in gold. Mate, how good is this Blacksmith's Beach? 
mates. And so, oh, look at the view down the back end. I thought I'd been here, mate, but I actually haven't. Mate, it's a great little spot. One of the last, you know, beach drives and campsites close to Sydney and, um, and Newcastle. We can actually camp, you know. Yeah, mate, it's actually got a lot of similarities to a little place you've ever been to in WA called Wilbinga. It's kind of the first beach camping you can do north of Perth, so it's kind of similar. Yeah, right, mate. Well, this is a little cracking spot. Sand can be notoriously soft down here, so um, we'll hug the beach and uh, I reckon cruise up. Done deal, mate. Done deal. Look at the view up there, will you? Yeah, it's a great little spot. This looks like the ideal spot, so we decided to pull up for the night. Temperatures in the low 30s during the day and nice, warm, balmy nights. you got to love an East Coast summer. Tell you what, it doesn't get much better than this. The cool ocean breeze, the sound of the waves, and the crackle of a campfire. And to top it off, an ice cold beer as we watch the sun go down. Tomorrow, yep. we're gonna meet our we're gonna meet our mate Joel. Joel, yep, he'll be full of stories. <laughs> He's always full of stories. Good times. He's bringing out a special truck too. I know, I can't wait to see this thing, you know mate. What I'm gonna do? You're not gonna, I'm gonna offer you money for that truck tomorrow. Yeah. I, I mean it, I'm gonna offer you money for that truck tomorrow and see if you sell. He won't sell it. And we're gonna do a track that ne you've never done it, have you? Which one? Killy Luke. I don't think I have out of no. all, like it's a local track down yep. here. I haven't done it and it's it's the one. Big day, mate. Can't wait. I reckon maybe Can't maybe wait. maybe one more coldy just because that fire's still got a bit to go in it. Yeah. I'll hate to see that go out before I say goodnight. Get more for less at four-wheel drive supercenter with incredible deals on Adventure Kings camping and outdoor gear. Take your camping experience to the next level with the amazing Grand Tourer Mark III aluminium rooftop tent. The rooftop tent that practically sets itself up. King's portable gazebos are built ultra strong with a tough steel frame, are easy to set up even by yourself and are available in multiple sizes for the campsite or the job site. The incredible new 270 degree freestanding awning can be set up in just 40 seconds and wraps around the side and the back of your car for incredible amounts of shelter. Hit the water on a King's inflatable stand up paddleboard for an insane amount of fun at the beach, the river or the dam, but warning it's highly addictive. Plus there's fridges, solar panels and more to make every adventure incredible. At Full Drive Supercentre, you get more for less. morning we packed up quickly, but soon find ourselves back in the soft sand trying to exit the beach. Alright mate, I'll just take hang on, get soft. Sand is very soft mate. Might just make this. Oh dear, you got to go uphill though from there. Now I've got to say it, that the sand on Blacksmith's Beach is super soft. You're still going, that's amazing. I'd almost go as far as saying it, it's one of the softest beaches in Australia. It's still moving. This is not the runoff I would have liked mate, <laughs> let's be honest. I don't know how it's doing it, mate. I'm just, I've got the foot down. I should be bogged by now. That's phenomenal. It's these tyres that is just making it work. I might have this. I might have this. There we go. Tell you what, I just made that. Now let's see what Graham's got. He looks to have a lot more momentum than me. That's the way. The d max of momentum carries him through with no problem at all. Now, if I'm right, just down here, we're going to bump into and meet up with an old friend of ours, long-time friend of ours, Joel. You've seen him before on a couple of DVDs. He's been on a few trips with us. And he usually drives a GU Patrol, a really smick, well-decked-out GU Patrol. But he's just taken ownership of what I consider to be an absolutely iconic truck. And this might surprise you, a truck that I would very much like to own one day. Shall I tell you what it is, or shall I just let you see it? No, I think I'll just let you see it. He's just down here. We'll go and say good day to him. Mate, lo and behold, there is a good-looking vehicle standing next to Joel. I was going to say. There's two iconic things there. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this beast of a vehicle, mate. 47 series ute. Beast of an owner too. How does he fit in there, mate? Look at him, proud as punch. Joel is a good mate of mine, and he knows this area really well. Mate. How are, we? How are you, bud? Hey. Look at the old girl. Yeah, it's coming together, right? What a gem. What you're looking at, of course, is a HJ47. It's the one with the two H diesel engine. And you don't find too many in this good a condition these days. That is Miranda Kerr on wheels, my friend. We're going to test it out today, I reckon. God, that is, I would love one of those. I must admit, it doesn't have air con in, let's be honest. It is it has, it's got air con in here, right? You've got air con there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Kick yeah. the flap open. Windows are down. Yeah. Well, should we test her out? I reckon so. Let's get into it. Let's, let's go. Get the tracks. Jump in. Yeah. Next up, we're heading to the Killingsworth Loop Track. 
This must uh, be the start of the track there, is it Joel? Yeah mate, this is the start of it now. It looks pretty dry, so it should be alright, but uh, it's a game changer in the wet. Yeah, I bet it would be mate, I bet it would be. And um, we'll just cruise around here and it's a loop, isn't it, this track? Yeah, yeah, it's just a big, big loop, few K long, and uh, it's got some good challenges in it. You know, Joel absolutely lives and breathes his off-road lifestyle. If he had it his way, he'd be out in the bush absolutely 100% of the year. As we push our way further into the Killingsworth Loop, things are already starting to heat up. The track is getting tighter and the ruts are getting deeper. Boys, this is a very steep um, entry down to a little gully and then it comes straight back up again. Yeah, she looks steep and steep and rough. Super steep. Super steep. I might even give you a bit of room, mate. I think you should, mate. This is this is really steep and um, you really want to get your wheel placement, I think, yes, right. The key for me is first gear low range and really let that diesel do the talking. There it goes, things off the seat. I'm gonna hold on with two hands here. I'm gonna use the brakes a little bit because it really is that steep and just feather them. It's kind of cool, she just slides into the right wheel rut, so it's going nice and slow. Graham's watched me descend down this part of the track. Now it's his turn. How good is downhill descent control? Is modern technology in vehicles these days? I'm belly for most of this. I don't really understand it. All I know is it absolutely works. You can tell I was really good. Really concentrating there. Alright, come on now. Good work, mate. Now at the opposite end of the scale, let's see how the big 47 does. Knowing from experience with the drum brakes on these things, it could be a little bit hard going. But you've got to give it to those old diesel trucks. It really does a number on this challenge. Well done for a girl. Does this to drive any better? A little bit better. But like they say, what goes down must go back up. What are you thinking, mate? I'm thinking there's so many different lines here, but only one adventure. of them looks like you're not going to put it on its lid. I'm still liking up through here. Yeah, that's still pretty gnarly. You've got to turn. Yeah. I'm going to turn right and try and go up past that tree. Oh, on the left of it? Yeah. That's a good line. It is. Yeah. It's, it's, I think it's one of those ones you give it a go. If it didn't work out, you could back up and have a go over here. Ooh, sheesh. Up here? That's, yeah. That's pretty gnarly. There, Jeez, though. man. Yeah. And then what? Try and crawl up through there? Yeah. I'm just worried about my rooftop tent scraping that tree. Because the body will want to go... That could be your best friend. With the line picked out, I'm going to give it a go. Getting those tyres pointed in exactly the right direction and also trying to limit the throttle so you don't get tyre spin really is the key to driving technical tracks just like this. They sure do. I've got Graham and Joel standing outside the vehicle so they can point me in the right direction. There's just so many different lines through here, tracks everywhere. There's another one up here that looks pretty gnarly. Yeah, let's go. Yep. Yeah, just like that. Right on. Well, that's, that's still a bit of a line. Turning, turning, yep. That's you. Yeah, how good's that feeling when you walk up a technical bit of track? Go the 80. What a cool little playground for four wheel driving. Just got so many different lines you can take. It's really choose your own adventure. Super fun, super cool. Now it's Graham's turn in the D Max. With some precision driving, he's made it look easy. Now the traction control is doing a superb job of keeping that traction to the ground and the vehicle moving. Yeah, no, that's hard right in here now. It's a tight little turn up here. Yep, yeah, there you go. Yeah, there you go. Strong arm. Alright. With a little right foot, I think he's got it. Good drive, mate. Good drive. Last but not least, Joel's on the move. One of the biggest problems that Joel will have is those leaf springs. 
Now, coming from a background of driving leaf sprung vehicles, I know that the spring hangers are usually the first thing to get hung up on rocks off road. So he really has to choose the perfect line. Ah, gotta come back. I wouldn't go any further. Beautiful. Keep going. Now you can go back a bit. Keep going. Keep going. It's all you. Well done. Would you listen to that little 2H diesel purr? It's built for tracks like this. It might not exactly be a speed demon, but in low range, it's absolutely perfect. Mate, 47 series. Oh, how good are they, mate? Just. My grandfather had one exactly the same, in that sandy sort of colour. Yep, beautiful, mate. Now, talking of iconic things, Oh, Kelly Lou. Yeah. She's a doozy. Mate, this is like the whole sort of Newcastle region. You've got yeah. little tracks like this, which are essentially playgrounds. Yeah, Come yeah. and test yourself, your yep. rig. Yep. See if you can outdrive your mates. Don't come in here without lockers. Winch. Look, at least a winch, I reckon. Oh, at least a winch. If, yeah, you're, by, if you're by yourself. Yep. There's so many different tracks here. You can take an easy yeah. line, yeah. You get through, you can take a hard line. There's a couple, though. This one didn't have a, this one didn't have a chicken track. You'd have to winch yeah, this yeah, one sure. if you didn't. Either way, though. You can even bring a comp truck out here and find stuff that you will could. challenge you. You could. Should we continue? I think we've done we done 10%. Mate. 10%? Yeah, there are heaps to go. How yeah, good is it? Let's do it. And off we go again. This is just so much fun. <laughs> you found the only rock. <laughs> Let's get the heck out of here too, mate. The Killingsworth Loop just has a myriad of tracks out the back of Newcastle. He's a cracker of a little hill. But there's options out here for four drives of every standard. There's some big holes in there. You can tell that this track sees some serious drivers and forbies because there's rugged tracks with these huge ruts and they certainly do tell a story. Oh yeah, it's like a mini gunshot up here boys once you go over this rock ledge. It's uh, yeah, straight down into like a big, big hole really. Right now these tracks are super dry and traction isn't too much of an issue at all. I bet this would be a very, very different story after we've had a bit of rain. Uh, plenty of traction, boys. You gotta get into it, though. Good lord. Whoa! How on earth did this get here? Someone's someone's dug this out with an excavator, surely. Graham's not wrong. This seems man-made. I wonder. Either way, it's fun to drive. Good drive from down here, Graham. That's done really well, mate. You'll have fun with that, Joel. Around. Up next, we've got a very awkward climb with a big lean to the side. I think the key here is going to be to straddle this rut the whole way up. Stay high on the right hand side, and you should just walk straight up. But I'll send Sean through first and we'll see how he goes. Right on, mate. Yeah, this is a really committed drive. You really want to hug this rut, but there's a big log sticking out. Now I've got the rear locker in and I'm trying to use every bit of traction that's available. On the first go, I don't make it, so I turn those tyres just a fraction in towards the rut and give it another go. Harder than we thought. Can I take off from there a bit of right hand down? Yep. Yep, 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 yep. How good's that? Whoa, 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 whoa. With a little right foot punch and a fair bit of momentum going up there, I made it look, well, I wouldn't say easy. Good drive. But I got up there. There you go. How <laughs> much fun was that? Woo! Now Graham chooses a slightly different line, and I don't blame him too, because that track on the left, well, that was for big tyres only. Would you have a go with that traction control working? With some left and right movement on the steering wheel, he really does climb up that quite easily. 
Now it's Joel's turn. Now the key with driving a small tyre leaf sprung truck is to really get the tyres on the highest bits of rock and then really commit to it. Oh, I'll set to stage. the way Joel controls that vehicle. It's all about the line you take on these sort of tracks. Well done, mate. That's fantastic. Tractor! All right, I think this could be the last hill before we're out of here, and it's an absolute doozy at that. If he's got traction, I rate him getting up here, but if he doesn't, I reckon he's going to struggle. So I've got everything ready, just in case. We'll bring him up. Well done, mate! Yeah, you'll notice by the fact that I'm not saying a lot behind the wheel, that I'm absolutely concentrating at my hardest, because this really is a technical drive. You don't want to get this yep. wrong, and you don't want to stop momentum. Would you have a go at that raw suspension? Flexing its way up through this rock step, it really is making sure that I have the ultimate amount of traction by having all tyres on the ground at the same time. How yeah, good's that? Nice little rock line, that was really technical. Really had to pick the line through there. The other guys decided to take another track up, but it's no less fun. That's the thing with four-wheel driving, you can have all the fun and excitement you want if you can pick out what you and your vehicle are capable of. Jeez, even the chicken track's gnarly. There are different tracks for all level of vehicles, and that's what makes it so much fun. It really is a choose-your-own-adventure style of track. Boys, I reckon this uh, last rock step will round out a good day. Certainly will be, mate. Absolutely cracking day. I'll let you get up that first. What do you reckon, boys? I reckon camp sounds like a pretty good idea because camp's got cold beers. I've also got um, Sean's cooking because I'm going to cook tonight, boys. Well, I hope it's something manly because I've got a manly feast. Certainly will be. Pretty manly, mate, that's for sure. Well, if there's food around, I'll be there. The Pines Campground is a popular little campground in the Wadigan State Forest. This place can be very popular, especially on the weekends and school holidays. As you can see, we've pretty much got the place to ourselves because we've chosen to camp here in the middle of the week. And the day's starting to get on, so it's time to bring out the camp oven and see what I can whip up. Tonight we're in the Wadigans, hard tracks, hard meal. No joking, it's a pretty easy meal, but I'm cooking up one of my favourites. It's the old meaty man meatballs. It's a bit of a mouthful and um, in more ways than one. Now I'm gonna jump into the Waco, grab out the ingredients, Right, I'm gonna take out yeah, a bit of this. Get some mushrooms. Pork, that's always a good thing. I always find meatballs, you gotta get, the more meats the better. Some lamb. Grab some garlic and some eggs. Yeah, that's a, yeah, you need a few ingredients, the old meaty. <laughs> it's a couple, isn't it? What are you doing? Mate, mate, check this out. This is, it's, um, it's, uh, in the whale, in the whale household, yes. big tradition. The old manly, meaty meatballs. Many meats, manly meatballs. I'm getting a beer. Do you need a beer? Uh, no, I'm all right. I've diced up an onion. I've, yeah, you've I've, done a really good job. I've made it nice and fine. I chuck that onion straight in, just like that. You know what? I'm gonna help out here. Just, just start putting some stuff in there. That's the key. Done. That'll be well, that, unreal. That and the mushrooms together. Yeah. Changing the recipe here totally, on, the, on the fly. I'll on tell the fly. You what it's about. You've got to on be able to do fly, that. On the fly. Put some garlic in there. No, it's the key is, mate, it's Italian, you, you understand this. Magnon, man. Hey, hang on, how much have you going here? No, 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 it's just garlic. It's... That's a bit of it. Yep. That's free range Australian pork, my friend. You see what I'm doing here? I'm basically just getting the hands in. Um, lamb. Look at this, this bit of lamb as well. Now, no meatball was ever made without beef, my friend. You're right, you're 100% right there. Now, are you going to put uh, the mushrooms in there, or are the mushrooms going to, how are these going to work? Look, mate, it's not. I was going to cut them a bit more, but that's... They don't need to be cut, mate. Just get them in there. Start. Salt and pepper? Yeah, mate. I basically raided the sooty and got every spice out the back of her. Yep. Um, yep. There wasn't a lot of spices in the back, but all, right, so all the main ones, paprika. Yeah, you need paprika. Put a bit of that in. Oh, oh that's a lot. Whoa, that's, whoa, a, that's all right. What's this one? That one there. That's, that's, that's chilli flakes. That. Chilli flakes, that's a lot of those. No, it's not. And here we've got oregano. Oregano, that's yep. good. If you're making anything Italian, pretty much if you put oregano oh, in, it's Italian. On. Crack two eggs in there because because basically what you want, the egg holds it all together and that's starting to hold together. You don't have to make big meatballs. You could you could you could easily make some smaller ones as well. It's, it comes down to preference. Put them straight in. Starting to sizzle up good. Basically just trying to brown them off. You need small balls. No, you're right, you're right. 
That's you know right? That's it. That's it. We can get it. We can get a couple of small ones going. But mate, I'm just going to chuck this one in here. And when they the sort of brown ones, like flip them over. When yep. they get brown all the way around, yep. then the sauce goes in. Oh mate, they smell good. Mate, <clears throat> I was having a little nibble on these balls. Yeah, what are they mate, like? It's superb. Yeah, they should really? be, mate. They should be. Look, I've just cooked these ones on the fire. Oh. I wanted to keep some space in there. Now I'm ready to introduce these balls with those balls. Mate, it's like a nightclub. Put them in there. <clears throat> you give that a hold on the side it's there. Hot. No, it's not too hot. All right. I'm literally just... just scoop your balls up and put them in there. That's uh, Some of them haven't... Some of them's a bit rough on them. That's all right. Don't worry about it. Put some passata straight in. Yes. So I just want to chuck that one straight in there. Go around the edges too. It's a, it's a, direct, a direct violation of the rules. <laughs> what are you going to go next, mate? Mate, what I'm going to do now is tomato paste. Oh, you're really mixing it up, aren't you? It's, what, what you want to do, you want to chuck why. tomato paste. Some people don't like putting a lot of tomato paste in, I say. Go nuts. you got to get it out. Anyway, anyway. Yep. The old diced Italian tomatoes. I've actually got another one of these. I just wanted to see how much sauce to balls ratio was. Um, put that in. Look, that's, uh, I sometimes try and use a spatula. Go oh, right. Just can you be gentle? Right underneath. Get the old pasta on. Before I forget. Yes. Joel, you're going to jump in the, in the Waco, mate. You're going to grab some um, parmesan cheese out. I'm going to help myself some pasta, mate. Grab I'm some of that. Straight in there. Yeah, there you go. You got found that. And you also found a beer, I see. Just use your bowl as a bit of a That's windbreak. Yep. There's a nice big ball, Joel. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Put that one in. That's a good ball. Yeah, a couple if you like. Yeah, you go to That's a good ball. You know, mate. You got some parmesan? Yeah, look at this. Put a bit of that on. Yes, That's yes. Ah, that is really lovely. hot. Lovely, lovely. really hot. Lovely. Put a bit of this on. This is one of the better meals we've ever cooked in a camp oven. Many meat, manly meatballs. This is a real hit. Unreal. I want to sit by the fire and really get into these balls because they're, they're just, they're hot, they're tasty, mm -hmm. and I reckon it's exactly what we need for the tracks tomorrow, boys. What do you reckon? All right. Oh, it's a Get more for less at Four Wheel Drive Supercenter with insane deals on King's DIY storage and 12 volt gear to build your dream four wheel drive. Whether it's an inverter you need to run 240 volt gear on the job site or the campsite, a battery box or a 12 volt control box to easily access your power, King's 12 volt DIY gear is what you need to take your 12 volt setup to the next level. Need a battery? King's has you covered with a full range of AGM, slimline and lithium batteries in sizes ranging from 98 amp hour to 200 amp hour. All built with ultra high quality components to go the distance. And of course you just can't beat King's solar panels and blankets to silently charge your batteries anytime the sun's out. At Four Wheel Drive Supercenter you get more for less. That it's been a cracking couple of days, and Joel, thanks for coming out, mate. Yeah, no worries at all, mate. It's a bloody uh, good day, wasn't it? Cracking day, mate. Thanks for bringing the old girl out, too. Yeah, she, uh, she needs a bit of a wash and a bit of loving now, I think. Clean her all up again. Hey, that's a little beast. And, um, yeah, surprised where you put that thing. Yeah, surprising how much uh, leaf springs and twin lockers will still go places. It's our plan, Graham. What do you want to do, mate? Well, we're deep in the heart of the Waddigans. It'd be a shame not to push on, eh? All right, well, uh, we might turn left, Joel, and, um, Mate, we'll catch you next time on the tracks, eh? Will do, guys. We're going to head right this way, so uh, have a good trip. See us later. Drive safe, brother. You. Sean, it is with a heartfelt loss that we say goodbye to Joel. It's another day, and there's another classic track coming right up. Yeah, mate, starting off on an Uber Classic CPT80. Um, yeah, it's been a while since I've driven this one. Mate, brand new to it. Never even laid tread on track. I think last time I um, I drove it, I had to jump on the end of a winch because I couldn't, I couldn't drive the last little sort of hill climb out of here. That sounds like exactly what we're looking for, mate, just to round this thing off. Then again, if we've got time to save, we could always go and pick up a smaller one. The CPT 80 track has evidence of some fairly hardcore activity, and I'm wondering how it's changed since my last visit. Check this hill out. The first little challenge we see is a basic little rut, but it is quite steep on one side. The plan here is to get the tyres of the 80 series on the side of the rut and straddle down. Graham's seen my line in the 80 series, and now it's his turn in the D-Max. He goes for the same approach as the 80. Well done, mate. Oh, I didn't get down that hill. What you'll find about the Waddington State Forest is there's plenty of little tracks around that all start with CPT. Now, the one we're doing is CPT 80. Now, it's a famous little four-wheel drive track, and I suggest if you get up that way to check it out. 
Whoa, nearly killed myself. Apparently there's a hole there that I didn't see. I'm not sure which side to tackle this on, so I'm just going to let it do its thing. Damn! Up in front we've got a sloppy looking boggy section. That is some vesty mud down there. Now normally I'd be reaching for the locker, but in this case, I've got so much trust in the tyres, I'm just going to go without the lockers and let the generals do their job. You see, they've got a really aggressive tread. Oh, there we go, straight down. And big side blocks. Look, you can feel those tyres just working right now, getting grip. How much fun's this? Yes, yes, that's all tyres. That is all tyres. A little bit of left and right in the steering wheel, and just let those general X3s do their job. Go, Sooty, and go the generals. I think um, memory serves me right. We've got um, the best bit of the track coming up pretty soon. You mean we're not on it yet? That was the intro, mate. You know, I love this track because it's got so many little Bring technical pieces. You really have to think where the tyres are and how you're going to get through. This is a big hill, huge ruts. I'm just going to try and go as slow as I can and um, I'm going to have to be prepared to commit to a couple of bits because there's a few step ups. Like this one right here, this is going to be the hardest one, I think. So you've got to turn a corner. Oh, that feels all sorts of messed up. Go back, all the way back, and I'll put a rock in there for you. I'm going to put a couple of rocks in there so hopefully I can get some traction. That's the hard bit right now. I'm trying to climb two things at the same time while I'm on an angle like this and up a steep hill. That might be the little bit of traction I need just to get on up there. Try and crawl up that. With these sort of tracks, you really have to commit. Choose the throttle, the gear, and really just go for it. But right here, I'm facing a little problem. It's just a tree root that big. It's, it's, you're heavy, it's heavy, dude. It's a abrupt stop. I like this. No, I'm winching. You see, there's a tree root sticking out in the passenger side, and I just don't have enough momentum to get up and over it. I've given it a good go, but yep. there's nothing else I can do. It's time to get the winch out. That's oh. okay though, because there's plenty of big trees to anchor from. Now, as you can see, we've chosen to use an anchor point that's away from the bank. That way, it'll hopefully pull the vehicle out of the bank and hopefully protect my panels. I think I can drive from here. Let's give it a go. Trouble is we've lost momentum now, so starting off on a steep hill like this is always difficult. And we've got a big rock step here and then several more up ahead and it gets softer as well, so I have a feeling. We haven't seen the last of that winch, but we'll see how we go. I think I've got traction on this little bit. That's just so I can get a little go. You're gonna pop up on the left. That's where your issue's gonna be. Or you can stay there, or you can stay there. <laughs> I'm gonna have to winch you again. No, when you got 35s and um, quite a lift on you, and you still can't get through the ruts. It's big truck country. Once I'm past those huge ruts and moving again, I've got the momentum to carry me the rest of the way. I tell you what, you've really got to pick your battles when you're running smaller rubber like I am. I mean, sean has got a massive lift, he's running 35s, locked, and he can get himself up and out of those ruts. And even on that hill then, he was dragging his diff the whole way up. So, in my mind, there's just absolutely no point in trying to even attempt that hill. Now, if you have a look on the VMS here, I've got two options. Here's the one sean just did. Now, if I move down the track a bit, hang a right, there's another track going up. Now, I've seen it in the past, and I have a feeling it's going to be just as gnarly, but I haven't got that sideways lean that's going to do body damage, and I'm don't think I'll be scraping as much on the way up, so I'm keen to give that one a go, and Shauno's gonna meet me just up here somewhere if I need to get him to jump on the winch, so. Yeah, yeah, it's not far, it's only a couple hundred meters up here, so we're gonna give that a go. This is still one heck of a line. We'll see how we go. Now this challenge looks like an absolute doozy. There's a lot of big rock steps and also some big ruts as well, so you really wanna pick your line on this one. I wanna straddle this rut all the way up, keep an even throttle control. Now Graham's plan of attack for this track is to straddle the ruts. Now this is a good tip for anyone driving big ruts. When you get those tyres up on top of the ruts and you don't fall down into the holes, you can actually get a lot of traction and make these things look easy, which is exactly what he's done right here. This is the pinch. Yep. That was cool, that was really sick. 
further ahead and things are getting serious. We decide to take a closer look before committing. Well, I don't know about this. I might even get my diff hung up before I even get to here because yeah. there's big ruts. You're going to have one on there and one coming up through here too. It's... So I'm climbing there. Yep. You get one wheel up, you're all flexed out and yep. then you're going to climb again. You're all right all the way up through here. Yep. Why yep. don't we just tackle that bit as a whole separate hill? I think we just, just get to here. Both of us get here. Yeah, so I agree. You doing. can park up there and, and we'll get to, let's just do that. Look at that. No, Look no, that. don't, don't. Far don't. out. No, no. <laughs> that curls around the corner. It does. No, that's, that's, for, that's for future Graham to worry about. Yeah, that's a good plan. Let's just get past here. Let's get here up here. Done. And then figure out how All right, mate, you bring it up. I'll wait here for you. Yep. I'm pretty confident you're going to get to here. Okay, okay. Right, mate, bring her up. All right, here I go. All right, this is it, this is it. Whoa, this is just big angles. Now, on this section of track, there really is only one line you can choose. But it shouldn't be too bad. I'm just worried about my dip hitting those ruts and just stopping my progress. Good drive, good drive. Of course, there's a log out there. Good drive. Not a good drive, not a good drive. But even moving the steering wheel just a couple of inches, you'd really be amazed by what sort of difference that can make. Just a bit, that's your line. Now I just need to negotiate around a couple of big rocks and I'm halfway up. Well, you did that easily. Jeepers, creepers. That wasn't too bad. A little bit of suspension flex made that all right, actually. Jeez, you made that look easy. All well, the wheels are on the ground, so it yeah, sort of just walked. Yeah, yeah. I nearly took my foot off the brake, I got so excited. Now it's Graham's turn. There's a lot of big bundies up here. Gosh, I'm on an horrible angle already. I haven't even started. I'll try and pick a high line on this bank over here. I think your biggest issue might just be clearance, but we'll see what happens. I've got this. I'll take a different line, a bit of a cunning line here. Yeah, it's a good line too. A bit of a different line through there. Now, a lot of the time people think the bigger the vehicle, the better and easier it is that's to drive tough there. tracks. Well, that's not entirely true. You see, right here, the D-Max actually has a big advantage over the 80 series because yes. it's a smaller and more narrow vehicle. Yes. Oh, mate. Quietly surprised. You made it easier than me. I'm quietly surprised about that. It just sort of did its thing. Yeah. I just had to I hug that bank on the left to try and yeah. give me a bit of traction. It sort of right. spun the vehicle around and yeah. put you in the right. Put me in the right spot. And that line you came up hard in the left bank. Yeah. That's what just I should worked. have done. Yeah, yeah. It just worked, yeah. Unreal. All right, um, shall we continue? Let's do this. I want to need a spot. Yeah, I'm definitely going to need a spot up here. Now, have a look at this second section. It looks even more challenging than the first. There's only one thing for it. Point wow. and shoot. Let's go. Better get up over that. That's a committing little drive. you got to drive that. That was a big rock. <laughs> I can't see that other big rock. Uh, down to the right. Graham's got an eye at the front again. <laughs> that is some spotting by me. I don't think I'm going to make it. It's a big rock, is it? All right, so Sean has had a bit of an issue here. This tells a story. Look at that. Right there. It's where he's hitting his diff. I'm going to try and get him to go around it. I'm just going to show him where it is. Oh, that's it. And there. that's exactly why an extra pair of eyes is well worth having. Yep, you're right. You're good. Well done. There you go. Good spotting, mate. It's a good technical little drive. Graham's gonna have fun with that one. He's got better steering than I do, so he might be able to zip between some of those rocks and, um, and find a better line, hopefully. Try and take this left line again here. I don't know how we're gonna go. The D-Max ate the first section, so let's see how it handles part two. Well, that's just surprised the heck out of me. You! You just <laughs> did an amazing drive then. Yeah, 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 stop. Just needs momentum to get over this, I reckon. There you go, there you go, there you go. Nicely driven. And wouldn't you look at that, a simply awesome drive. Well done, mate. Yes! Yes! That's one of the best drives I've seen today. Very stoked about that. That's unreal. I reckon we call it quits, gonna have a beer. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a plan, far out. You just, um, it was pitch a perfect line. Yeah. You didn't go hard, you didn't drive. Nah, just take it Silly, easy. you just picked the right line and oh. made, it, made it look easy. Up you go, yeah. Unreal, all right. Move on. Keep going up, okay. I reckon. We've got a waypoint in the VMS at Muir Lookout, and that's where we're heading. <laughs> Check this one out, mate. 
What do you got around there, mate? It's like a, it's sort of stuck like a slot car on a track. You just got to drive right up this little rock step in between two big ruts. I can't see a thing. I've got the sun in my eyes. A lot of soot in the air. Well, you can only just fit an 80 series through here. Oh, there's my mirror. Push that in. <laughs> oh no, he's broken it. Ah, look, he's busted it. Oh, jeez, the, the soot. It's quite a tight and nasty little pinch. But Sooty absolutely loves this stuff. And apparently, so does the D-Max. We'll just take it nice and slow here. It's getting late in the day, we don't want to break anything. There we go. Yeah, Paul, we'll put this mirror in. Good drive, Graham. You must be getting close here to the track now, mate. Yeah, last little pinch, eh? Oh, I tell you what, it's been an epic, epic couple of days. Yeah, once again, Wadigans did not disappoint, mate. Oh my goodness, it's still not disappointing. <laughs> a little wheel lift. That was a cool little wheel lift for me. Where am I? I can't see where I'm going. Try right coming up here. To get to any good lookout, you must get to some altitude. And that's where all the best views are, and usually the higher the better. Cool. in the eyes. It's not easy. It looks like we've made it. We've reached our VMS waypoint. We're going to park the Forbies up and take to foot. It's a short walk, but welcomed after a lot of time spent in the saddle. How good is the Wadigans? Mate. How good is it, mate? Get a look at those. That is a view. That is a hell of a view. Yeah. So a little bit corny, mate, but yeah. I just love to end a trip on a high point. You got it. <laughs> Absolute <laughs> What a joke, what a joke. Mate, we're going to come plan with the place, though. You're right, you're you right. You know what, folks, we were never meant to actually stop in the Waddos. We're actually heading north to meet up with Breno to go for a wheel around Coffs Harbour, Port Macquarie region. But we got here, we met up with Joel, and we just decided to go no further. I guess that's what the Waddos is all about. This is so, I mean, look at that. We haven't even scratched the no. surface, too. Whoa, no. there's something in there that scratched the surface. <laughs> Be I'm careful sure. those things, mate. <laughs> but Waddigan's really is just an amazing full wheel drive track. You could spend how long here? Weeks oh, up weeks. You know, and a lot of people do. Yeah. Come on, every weekend they still haven't yep. driven all the tracks up here. Motorbike tracks, four wheel drive tracks, and walking tracks to get to stunning spots like this. Unreal. Mate, we've still got a lot of ground to cover because we're going from here the rest of the year making our way up the coast, all the way up. We've got a heck of a lot of And west, today. and we go west. a few little Tell loops. Oh, I can't like wait, that. I can't wait. All right, race for car park. You're on. I'm free. Which way is the car park? That way. <laughs> If you're after a next level 12 volt upgrade for your vehicle or your next camping trip, then check this out. The Adventure King's 120 amp hour lithium battery. This uses high capacity, brand new grade A lithium iron phosphate cells capable of thousands of cycles. It's paired with a high quality BMS able to output up to 160 amps of current. The future of 12 volt setups is here. Lithium batteries are super lightweight and still have heaps of power capacity. In fact, this battery weighs just over 15 kilos. That's about half as much as a similar capacity AGM. But that's not all. Lithium batteries have the ability to use their entire capacity from 100 to 0% and still have an incredibly long life. The reason Adventure King's lithium batteries are so good is because they use lithium iron phosphate chemistry. That means if you're using the entire 120 amp hours of capacity in this battery every day, it would still last almost five and a half years. Some cheap lithium batteries use grade B or even secondhand cells to keep the cost down, but not here. Adventure King's lithium iron phosphate batteries use brand new grade A prismatic cells. When these batteries are assembled, each individual cell is matched with others and then grouped. Then those cells are balanced, which means that these batteries always function at their best and ensure you have full capacity. Another major feature of these Adventure King's 120 amp hour lithium batteries is the high quality internal battery management system. This BMS for short takes care of the individual cells. It balances them while you're charging your battery. It prevents overcharge, over discharge, over temperature and short circuits. A high quality BMS is so important and it's also incredibly important to match the BMS to the cells and the use of the battery. 
A good indicator of a high quality BMS is to look for high current discharge and charge ratings. This battery is capable of charging and discharging constantly at up to 100 amps, and it can do a peak discharge of 160 amps of current. A high discharge current and a high peak discharge current are very important if you want to run things like inverters that need a lot of power when they turn on to fill the capacitors. If you're looking at a battery that has a much lower charge and discharge rate, they could be cost cutting by using a cheaper BMS. Lithium iron phosphate is a safe technology, unlike some other lithium chemistries, and Adventure King's lithium batteries are doubly safe. Not only are they sealed and safe to use in your vehicle, they've also passed a short circuit test, overcharge test, over temperature test, and a vibration test, so they're ready to be put to use. Some lithium batteries are extremely sensitive to hot and cold temperatures, and they can be damaged or destroyed by trying to use them. Adventure King's batteries though, can be charged anywhere from zero to 50 degrees Celsius, and used or discharged anywhere from negative 20 right through to plus 60 degrees Celsius. They use threaded M8 terminals for high power output and easy connection. Measuring it at 330 millimeters long by 162 millimeters wide and 215 millimeters tall, they fit perfectly in an Adventure King's battery box for a lightweight and powerful portable power station. And with 120 amp hours on tap, you could run a camping fridge for five or even six days. Or you can permanently install them in your vehicle for a next level, super powerful setup that barely weighs anything. And for that reason, they're perfect for your full drive, motorhome, caravan, or camper trailer, where you need to be concerned about GVM and GCM limits. So if you want a safe, lightweight, super powerful, and super long-lasting lithium battery for your next level setup, you can't beat an Adventure King's 120 amp hour lithium battery. Introducing the incredible Adventure Kings Premium Camp Oven Stove. Your new best mate for delicious barbecue or campfire cooking and warm, cozy fires whether you're at home in your backyard or at your favorite campsite. Let me show you all the things that I absolutely love about it and I'm sure you're gonna love too. This amazing bit of gear has been designed right here in Australia and it combines a camping stove and a portable barbecue into one. It can run off multiple fuel sources, wood, heat beads, charcoal, briquettes, and more. When it's time to cook up a feast, you can fit two large pots or pans on this huge flat cooktop surface that measures in at 520 millimeters long by 300 millimeters wide. That's enough space to cook up a feast for the entire family. And because it runs on wood or heat beads, you can leave the gas bottle behind. One less thing to pack. And when you want a beautiful roaring campfire, use the included hook tool to simply lift the two-piece lid off completely and just add in some more firewood. The raised and closed design means you won't risk scorching your grass, your deck, or even your driveway. And you'll be able to use it for a beautiful warm fire at campsites that don't allow open ground fires. Plus, your fire would last longer because you're closer to the heat. Now that's cozy. The enclosed design means it's super efficient and you can make the most of your fuel by directing the heat exactly where you want it. You can even adjust the temperature of your fire by varying the airflow. With these sliding vents on the side, a two-piece removable lid on top and an adjustable flue, you're always in control. Remove the entire lid for an open fire or just this circular inner piece if you need extra heat for cooking, like searing steaks to finish them off. And this up here, now that is a real game changer. A chimney that extends over 2.4 meters off the ground to direct smoke away from your campsite for smoke-free campfires. You can even position the premium camp oven stove under your awning, your gazebo, or your shed for maximum warmth. And the angular offset chimney piece allows smoke to funnel away rather than getting trapped underneath. There's even a spark arrestor on top for good measure. There are so many more things to absolutely love about the King's Premium Camp Oven Stove. It's been designed to be super sturdy with these four large legs that extend the footprint a foot wider in both directions for excellent stability. The legs simply screw into the bottom like this and you can remove the middle piece for a lower fire. This huge access door swings open with the included hook tool to allow you to easily refill the Premium Camp Oven Stove as required. Inside, you've got this fuel rack that keeps your wood or your charcoal up off the floor, maximizing airflow and preventing wasted heat. 
It's a breeze to transport, set up and pack down to with no tools required. Each of the four two-piece legs simply screw together and the chimney pieces pack into each other with everything fitting into the main body of the premium camp oven stove for simple transport. Make sure you don't miss the incredible genuine cooking accessories available too, like a proper wood-fired meat smoker and a clever barbecue hot plate set to really take your camp cooking to the next level. And a stainless steel water boiler too. Whether I'm at home in my backyard or out camping with family, my mates, or even by myself, I absolutely love my Adventure Kings premium camp oven stove. It's a portable fire pit, it's a wood or charcoal barbecue, and it's the centerpiece of every backyard get together or camping adventure, and I know you're gonna love yours too. You asked and we've listened. The incredible MT1 Go Anywhere camper trailer has just received an ATM upgrade to two tonnes. All new Adventure Kings MT1 camper trails will now come with the new upgraded two ton ATM. But don't worry if you already own an MT1 because a retrofit upgrade kit is available too. The MT1 is already an ultra tough trailer with a one piece 150 by 50 mil chassis that extends right from the drawbar all the way to the back of the trailer. Now it's even tougher with upgraded suspension, bearings, brakes and wheels to bring it up to a two ton ATM. The brakes are upgraded from 10 inch to 12 inch electric brakes. The alloy rims are now rated to two ton ATM and an upgraded set of suspension arms also suit the upgraded ATM. And for existing owners, the retrofit upgrade is incredibly easy to do at home yourself. Everything just bolts onto the trailer with no modifications needed. That extra payload capacity means that you've got more ability than ever before to carry the gear that you need and still remain legal. For more information and full detailed specs on the MT1, see the four wheel drive Supercenter website. Now with a two ton ATM upgrade, the Adventure Kings MT1 Go Anywhere camper trailer can carry more gear than ever before.